What's up preppers? Welcome back to another video. This one I want to talk about the positive side of prepping. Yes, the good things, all the wonderful things. So many channels will tell you the doom and gloom, will tell you World War 3 is happening tomorrow. Hang on, tomorrow. No, wait, tomorrow. Just to get clicks, just to get ratings, just to get likes. And it'd be very easy to do that and come on here and start telling you I've got information that's going to make you go and live in a bunker for the rest of your life. But that's not what it should be about. And this is what I want to bring to you, that it's not all doom and gloom. There is too much fear in this community already. Some of it is justified, don't get me wrong. It's good to be mindful of the news. It's good to know what's going on around you. And it's good to prefer, prepare for what you think might be the likely situations and scenarios. But prepping should be about eliminating that fear and reducing your need to worry about it. The good things that come with prepping are very easily observed positives. Enhanced safety and security being one of them for yourself, for your family, for your property. Self-reliance. Most preppers want to eventually end up on the self-sufficiency, self-reliance kind of route. You know, we'd all have a big farm full of all the food we ever needed, ideally. Obviously, that's not always possible. But self-reliance, when it comes to power, anything like that, even just the skills you learn, even knowing what to forage, all this information that's free to do, stops you relying as much on external factors and starts to give you more control. And of course, health and well-being, not just physically, but mentally, is very much key to being successful in life, as well as prepping, as well as a Teotihuacan situation. The end of the world as we know it is the common phrase, Teotihuacan. And what prepping is to do is to try and to keep the world around us, our immediate circle, the way that we know it. It's so it's not the end of the world as we know it. It might be for everyone else, but for you, things can carry on a bit more normally. I'll be honest, if you are prepping through panic and fear and you've got to get everything now, it's probably too late already. But, you know, if that makes you feel better, go and panic by away. But if you listen to a lot of the YouTubers, you'd be doing that every month and then you'd be using it and you'd have to start all over again and still go to work and still pay the bills because doomsday didn't happen tomorrow yet. But prepping as well as a hobby, as a way of life, can not only be useful, but enjoyable and dare I say it, even fun sometimes. Camping for me is one of the big ones for that factor. Even if you never intend to bug out in any way and bugging in, the skills you can learn through just going camping, holidays, even if that's not your main holiday and you still want to go and do Barbados for two weeks, just go for a week's camping with the family in a half term sometime. Try it, even in bad weather, because it kind of gets you used to that using, especially if you do it without technology. Don't go and get the electric hookup. Don't go and glamp. Just literally take what you've prepped. Even if that is power banks and you want some electricity, fair enough. But I go no power whatsoever. And that experience camping with the kids, with the family, with no distractions of technology, um, entertainment, having to do stuff together brings us closer together as a family. But it also kind of has that prepper element of if we have a power cut for a week at home, the kids are used to this kind of cooking. They're used to having to find a way to entertain themselves without the power. And it kind of does give them a bit of training, but keeps it happy and positive and a lot of affirmations there for them that they're doing a great job. Let them get involved. Don't hold them back off everything. If, if you can do it safely and responsibly, show them how to use uh, a ferris rod and things like that. They'll love it. Trust me, they will love it. That's just my side of things, but whatever you're prepping for, try and find that twist that could be used as the fun side of it. What do you enjoy about it? How can you share that with the people around you? I can't stress enough to avoid the negative preachy preppers because they're everywhere, not just on YouTube, not just on forums, in groups in real life. You get them all the time. 
They know exactly what to do. They know exactly what's best. And you're doing it all wrong. And that's terrible. Or you'll never survive. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to laugh and point at you. That is the people you don't want in your life. You especially don't want them in your mag. I assure you, it's not going to work out in the long run. And if they're stalking your fear, you're going to pass that fear on to the people around you, in your group, in your inner circle. So you don't want that kind of negative influence becoming a full negative circle going around back and forth to everyone. So prepping should be proactive, not reactive, where you're focusing on solutions, not on the actual problems. Too much time spent focused on the actual issue and the doom and gloom and the panic of it. That's not prepping. Focus on the solution, have something in place and let that calm and ease that fear of the unknown, that fear that might happen, may not, most likely won't. However, if that's your fear, then prepare for that and subdue that. And that gives you more time and more positive energy to spend with your family and doing the things you love. A positive mindset going into a bad situation, having that can mentally prepare you for that much better. And you're going to go into it a lot calmer and a lot more prepared in your mind. And there's loads of things you can do to kind of get yourself into that positive mindset. Don't be jumping on other people's back and giving them, you know, don't be YouTube trolling. I, mean, I know somebody was, is literally going to troll this video because I've said it, but Things like that, putting that negativity out into the world, that's just going to come back on you. And no, it's not some hippie karma thing. I don't believe in any of that. But just put that same positive out attitude out to other people. If you see something that somebody's doing wrong, don't just go, that's terrible, bad idea, etc. Try and like go in with a better attitude like, why don't you try it like this? I've tried like this and it's been more successful. I once had this problem, etc. There's loads of ways you can do that. Um, and there's loads of things you can find online for practicing that kind of positive attitude. Uh, recently, I found out about practicing gratitude. Yes, it, I, I know you're going to say it's one of these stupid diary things, but no, you don't even have to write it down. Some people do. They have a gratitude diary and they write down what they're grateful for every morning kind of thing. But you can just think about that. Even if you just take five minutes to think like I'm grateful for, and I know we've got some things are bad in this country, like the cost of living, but even the poorest person living in a home in this country is better off than 70% of the world because they've got a roof over the head. They had something to eat yesterday. You'd be amazed what we take for granted in this country that we should be grateful for and just try and, Bring that kind of attitude in everything you do. I'm guilty of it. Somebody saying, how's it going today? And I'll say, still alive, which is really negative. I'm instantly putting that negative out there rather than saying, yeah, brilliant, wonderful. I'm so happy. It's great. You know, I'm not saying go around, be happy, clappy and drink the Kool-Aid, but kind of put that positive spin on everything and you'll start to do it with everything you do. Surround yourself with positive people, people that uplift you. Now, this is not just in your everyday life, in your workplace, but if you're thinking of communities, prepper communities and mags, the reason we started a forum of our own, UK Prep, is because of the negativity we saw in so many other forums. And we try and police that and stamp that out, but you're still going to get them people no matter what. But the reason I started it is because I just didn't want any of that. One of the best phrases, I'm going to paraphrase it, but Will Smith said something like it, but he said, like, surround yourself with people that feed your flames, not piss on your fire. Yeah, that's the kind of people you want around you. If you look at the people that are in your life, look at the people you talk to regularly, are they improving you? Are they positive influences on you? Or are they dragging you down all the time? And make sure if you're the person dragging people down, just don't. Concentrate on yourself. Get some positivity. I love this hobby of prepping. 
because I'm going to call it a hobby for that very reason that I don't want it to take over your life. I don't want to put fear in you and you go and sell everything and buy a bunker and live in there thinking the end of the world's going to happen tomorrow. It is a hobby, but I love it because it gives me that sense of control over a lot of things that I wouldn't normally have the control over. Yes, there's a bug where you always want more, you always want something else, but it does put my mind at ease more. I know if something happened tomorrow, I'll be in a better position than a lot of other people to provide and help for my family and my immediate circle. The only way this prepper movement, as people like to call it, or this fringe group, becomes something that's not a tinfoil hat wearing crazy ass fringe group is if we put that positive spin on it more often. If we tell people the good things about prepping. And you'll probably find most of the people that ask me, how do you get your partner on board? How do you get your kids on board? If you're doing it via this kind of angle, this kind of positive spin on things, keeping it all like lighthearted, like the camping trips and things like that, they're going to buy into it even when they don't know they're buying into it. It's kind of a rant video that's not a rant because I'm not angry. I'm really happy. It's all good. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, let's push that positive side of prepping out there. For some reason, my videos are getting lower and lower numbers on YouTube. And I really don't want to jump down the street of fear mongering, saying the doomsday clock's ticking, blah, 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 and all of this just to get ratings. I would rather help you small few people that are watching this now just have a more positive experience with this whole thing. I've unsubscribed to a lot of people that I don't see as a positive influence. I've still got some who I see have good resources. You've just got to kind of look past the rubbish. But some of them that are just all negative and all doom and gloom, I've removed because I don't even want them seeing showing up on my feed. I don't need that side of it fueled. And you'll find a lot of the little channels which I try and promote in the communities all the time have more of that positive side about them. So, bottom line is, don't let this shit take over. Stop and smell the roses. All right. Life's too short to live in fear. And it might be even shorter if the world carries on going the way it is. Yes, we all know that that situation is there, but we don't have to focus on that. Prep, but don't let it take over your life and still enjoy them small little moments that you do get because they can be gone so quickly. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay positive, stay happy, stay prepared, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.